Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide, with a preview of the IAE Expo that is starting this week. I did a video covering the Expo last year, but since YouTube algorithms don't like the old content, I just can't reference you to that old video. So the IAE Expo is essentially two events going on at once. There is the player event, and then there is the fleet builder players event. And I want to emphasize that the fleet building game is entirely optional. You can fully play Star Citizen with just a starter ship and buy all the rest of your fleet in game with UEC. You don't have to buy any ship at all with money and you don't have to own a ship in order to experience it. The big ships will all have a need for crew, even more so in the future. So what is the player's game? Well, Explore all the ships that you don't own and may never own, become familiar with their layouts in case you ever have to crew on them, and rent them out for a day so that if ever somebody does ask you to take the pilot seat of their reclaimer for a moment, you won't have never have done it before. But for that, you first have to get to the show itself. Go to Microtech and there will be a fourth stop added to the tram system called the Tobin Expo Center, between Aspire Grand and the Commons. That's it. And this year there will be an extra twist of my Killing Time to 318 contest for the coolest recorded landing of a ship Hercules size or larger. So if you don't have one, you can do a day rental of that Herc or Reclaimer or 890J and take a shot at winning your choice of the Crusader Spirit series ships. Then there is the fleet building game. And if Star Citizen is like baseball, then the Fleet Builder game is a bit like being a team manager, like in the movie Moneyball, trying to get a winning team with your budget among the changing landscape of old veterans, new rookies, and prospects working their way up through the farm system. And before getting into it, recognize that the Fleet Builder game changes the character of Star Citizen a little. Without fleet building, the premise of Star Citizen is that you've finished your tour of duty in the military, taken your discharge money and bought a small ship, and are going to build yourself up from nothing. Engage in the fleet building game, it's like you've ended your tour of duty to find that you've inherited your rich uncle's family business and now must manage and grow it. And just like Moneyball has a lot of particular player-related jargon, so does the fleet building game have its own ship-based jargon. So let's start with insurance. Currently, all ships are able to be claimed without cost if you are patient. At some point in the future, that will change, and there will be a trickle of cost for insurance in order to be able to do that. And if you don't have insurance, you will likely have to buy the ship again at a replacement cost price in UEC that will be less than the original purchase price, but still hella expensive. Now, all ships come with a period of insurance included with the purchase price. Normally, it is six months, but if purchased during the IAE, it is 10 years. However, the very first time a ship is introduced to the public, CIG offers it with lifetime insurance, also called LTI. The thing is, when you upgrade a ship, which I will get to in a moment, it keeps the insurance of the original ship. So this creates something you'll hear about called an LTI token, which is an inexpensive and newly announced ship that has LTI. So people wanting to buy a older ship that no longer has LTI offered can buy the new LTI token ship and then upgrade it to the ship that they actually want. So for example, let's say you want to buy the Corsair this year, you buy the LTI token ship, upgrade it to the Corsair, and now you have a Corsair with LTI. CIG seems to always announce an LTI token ship on the first day of the sale before the start of the show. but. Don't just snap up the LTI token ships for the heck of it. Every LTI token ship you buy represents, unless you want the ship itself, the start of a plan to make your fleet one ship larger. Do you have an idea of what that one ship you want to be? Indirectly, I mentioned under LTI the concept of upgrades. Any ship you own can be upgraded to a more expensive ship, but you don't simply upgrade the ship. You buy an upgrade certificate and then apply the upgrade certificate when you wish. This can give a greater degree of flexibility. For example, for the landing video contest, the prize is the winner's choice of the C1, A1, or E1 spirits. Did I have to buy three ships? And yes, I buy these prizes. You have to have a lot more subs than I do before CIG or anybody else gives you stuff to throw around. No, I bought the C1 and then a C1 to E1 upgrade certificate and then an E1 to A1 upgrade certificate. Then I can give the winner the whole batch and they can decide whether and which to apply. 
and if they decide to just stick with the C1, they can melt the other two certificates. Which brings up melting. After 60-day refund period, anything you bought can be returned to get store credit. That's melting. There is also something called a buyback token, which means if you melt something and regret it, you can buy back the original ship even if it is not currently being sold. It used to also include the original price, but that no longer applies. Which brings up another term, war bond. Melting and upgrading and rebuying may be fun, but from CIG's standpoint, they don't pay the bills. So they have on selected items, particularly on new items, a discounted price called the war bond offer that is only available with new cash and not store credit. And that brings up another phenomenon. Ships, when they reach a flyable state, and sometimes if their scope changes during development, a rare event nowadays, have their price increased, which, like the war bond, can make for an incentive for those who buy the ships early. So let's talk about the ship pipeline process. Ships undergo the following distinct phases. Concept, white box, gray box, final art, and then finally, flyable. Prior to recent times, there was a phase called hangar ready, where we could bring the ships and walk about them in our private hangars, but not yet fly them. We don't have those hangars anymore, but we occasionally have a ship, like last year with the Vulture, that was in the hangar-ready state, able to be shown real and explorable on the showroom floor, but not yet rentable or flyable. But there are also times when CIG, to build excitement, will keep everything under wraps and we have a straight-to-flyable ship, which is always, as intended, a surprise. And then there is a particular class of ships I call whale bait, the big impressive ships with big impressive price tags, which practically scream conspicuous consumption. To increase their exclusiveness beyond just price, some also only have a limited number allowed to be sold and released on a specific timetable, resulting in some folks sitting and hitting the refresh button on their browsers to try to catch them when they arrive. Now, the way the show is organized, there are two halls. Each manufacturer or group of manufacturers gets a haul for two days. So the show will start with just Drake Interplanetary, then a new vendor each day. So for example, on day two, Origin Jump Works moves to the second hall while Drake continues in the first hall. Then on the third day, Aegis will take the hall that Drake was in while Origin has their second day in the hall. And so it goes until the best in show day and then three days in which all the ships are available and the fleet builders complete their plans. So, the 10 types of ships you will see at the IAE, some qualifying in more than one of the categories. 1. The LTI token. Usually one of the first things announced, a small ship or vehicle never seen before, usually less than $100 US. 2. The newly flyable ship that we have followed through its development for a long time and is finally available to be in the game, perhaps with a newly higher price because they are now flyable. This year that is expected to be the Drake Corsair. 3. The veteran ships that we can buy anytime, but now during the show, we can buy them with 10-year insurance, included even if we don't leverage an LTI token. 4. The ships that have fly Four, the ships that have been flyable in the game but aren't available in the store every day, but during the show become available for sale, again with 10-year insurance, if you don't leverage an LTI token. 5. The straight to flyable ship. Not so much surprising as to whether there will be one, but definitely a surprise as to what it is. 6. If we are lucky, a newly hangar-ready ship that we can see and walk inside on the showroom floor for the first time. I was hoping that this year it might be the Banu Merchantmen, but it doesn't seem to be that quite far along in the process. Maybe next year. 7. The new surprise concept ship available for the first time with LTI. At the CizenCon, they teased a new mining ship and had us vote on which manufacturer would make it. Could it be ready for concept sale announcement already? It would be cool if it did. Ideally, it would be finished to the point to be able to show it in the holo viewer. Number eight, the old concepts that we have been following for ages. Expect to be able to refresh your anticipation by walking around them again in the holo viewer. Nine, the whale bait ship, which in my taxonomy is anything over $300. Ten, and finally, the limited edition whale bait capital ships for the really big whales. And so there will certainly be plenty to talk about and write about for the next two weeks before returning to Waiting for 318. 
So, now for the update on our giveaways. First, there's a piloting contest for the veneer of the best landing of a ship Hercules size or larger that is running until 318, with the winner getting their choice of the Crusader Spirit Ships. See the video referenced in the description for all the details on that. And then there's the Grow the Channel Ship giveaway. We've met the membership and now at almost 95% of the subscriber, or of course, the IAE Expo, which is going to have to happen first. To give some lucky player their choice of the Anvil Liberator, that ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the Misk Odyssey, the long length look ahead launcher lorry. One entry per video, members are entered automatically. And if the winner was a member as of the publication date of the winning video and at the drawing date, they will win both the ships. For non errors, just be a subscriber and comment, somehow including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the movie I compared to the fleet building game. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.